Today we're talking to Piers and Miles Redwood from Payright. Thanks a lot for joining me, guys, on the LATS report. Now, I'll Thank start you, with the most important question of all when it comes to brothers. Who's the oldest? <laughs> well, that would be, that would be me. Uh, older and wiser, as I like to describe myself. But I, 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 a lot of people do say I look younger. And just looking at the... As we're here on Zoom and I'm looking at the two photos aligned, I think I probably do look younger, but I am older. I'm probably one of my two, three years older than Piers. Okay. Well, well, given that you're older and now that we know the pecking order, I'll start with you for the first question. Yep. So could each of you, starting with you, uh, just give a one-minute highlight summary of your personal and business background, just to introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So... Prior to getting involved in this business, obviously, and Piers and I founded the business as what would it be probably four years ago. Um, I was uh, always working consumer lending. Um, immediately prior to this, I was a GE Capital, um, and then prior to that, I spent a lot of my working career in a combination of London and, and New York. Um, I was a Bank of Ireland Northern Trust um, prior to that. But like I say, always working consumer lending. I'm an accountant by trade, by profession. Um, and when Piers gives his background, you'll see that we've got quite complementary skill sets, which is really what prompted us to get involved in this business. Okay. And Piers? Yeah, look, I'll probably just start by saying, uh, I, yes, you're the younger brother, absolutely, but uh, I probably refer to myself as the, as the younger, better-looking model, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll let that one go through as well. But, uh, uh, look, certainly my, my background um, in a similar vein to Miles, I've been, uh, have my broader background has been across the consumer lending space. Um, if, uh, if Miles sort of has that, uh, those back end uh, type uh, experience, mine's more around the front end. So experience across sales, uh, marketing, I uh, spent a broad part of my career at businesses like uh, Flexi Group uh, and Wingate Consumer Credit, all from those front end sales and marketing uh, type roles. Uh, and just to Miles' point, I guess it's the combination of those two skill sets, um, complementary skill sets that um, allowed us to come together to, to have quite a unique position in the marketplace. We come at business in, in a very different way, but it combines really well to, to, to build the brand and build the, build the product. And uh, that's sort of what, one of the things that prompted us to, to, to work together. Excellent. So what actually motivated you? You started about four or five years ago. What motivated you to create PayRight? Yeah, I mean, there was a number of things that motivated us, really. I think, as um, as Miles alluded to initially, um, you know, that complementary skill set that we referred to was a really important element to, to combine um, what we knew and what we could take from the industry and bring it to, to the market. Um, at the time, you know, we felt uh, that there was a, a, bit, a gap in the market, uh, and that gap in the market being, you know, no one was really transitioning transactional sizes or funding transactional sizes across one, considered type purchases, so more considered purchases than what you might find with those smaller impulse buyers. And, and probably more importantly, no one was servicing well the transaction sizes in the middle ticket space, so over a $1,000. Um, so that's the gap that we identified and the gap that we feel that we solve really well in the marketplace. Uh, and it was sort of a combination of that and, of course, those skill sets we spoke about earlier on that prompted us to, to get to where we are. Excellent. Now, uh, you went to the competitive market there's larger players already in the market so was that that gap that you identified was that the, the key point or was there any anything else that allowed you to muscle your way in against much larger established competitors yeah well I, I, I take that one I, I think certainly when when Piers and I established this business founded this business um, four years ago it was probably prior to the emergence of, of Afterpay and Zip and some of those other more established players. Um, so I think cert that's certainly what prompted us to get involved. There was really only one player in the market at the time, that was Sergi, and that was since rebranded to, to Hum. But even now, as we look at the competitive landscape, and clearly there have been a number of new uh, buy now, pay later entrants into the market, particularly in more recent years. Um, but if I consider the nature of our business and compare us to, to them, um, the majority of those players very much operate in the micro ticket space. So that's sub $1,000 buy now, pay later type offering. Whereas for us, we are that high price point. Um, for context, a lot of those micro ticket buy now, pay laters have an average transaction size, I would suggest somewhere between $150 and $400, $500. For us, our average transaction size is uh, closer to $2,500, which lends itself to, to a fairly 
uh, diversified in quite a different merchant mix again to some of the more retail focused buy now pay later providers. Okay, so, uh, sorry, you're right. Imagine if I was a merchant, one of your potential merchant partners or, or a consumer, what what would I see in transacting with PayRight that would reflect, you know, your business philosophies and, and, and you know, might put a smile on my face or make me, make me glad that I'm doing business with you? Yeah, look, maybe I'll take that one as well. Um, so I think one of the key points of difference for PayRight is that we, we're a very merchant-led business. Uh, we have a merchant focus. We partner very closely with our with our um, with our merchants and and across certainly those across a variety of industry types and and uh, the broader bike industry is a really important one for us as well. So we get we get quite close to our merchants. We work closely with them to ensure that their clients and their customers have the most desirable outcome. Uh, and that outcome for us is is ensuring that they have a positive payment experience. Uh, we want them to ensure they're actually getting the most out of the payment plan and making those products and services that they're, that they're acquiring as affordable as possible, but doing so in a really responsible way. Um, you know, we have a very qu uh, quick and, and slick application process. It only takes a, a few minutes to be able to get, a, to be able to get approved and applied. Uh, and for the merchant, you know, they get paid instantly up front um, on the same day that the application goes through. So you've got a combination of a, of a great process that works really well from the merchant's perspective with a partner that, that works really closely with them to get a desirable outcome. And from, a, from an end consumer's perspective, the opportunity to spread that cost out over flexible terms and, and get an approval and an outcome really on the spot. Okay, excellent. Now, we, as we record this, we're five months in or thereabouts to the COVID-19 pandemic in Australia. But of course, you're essentially Melbourne based and you've gone into level four lockdown. So, you know, what's changed? What challenges does that bring to you and the whole buy now, pay later market? Yeah, look, it's definitely presented challenges, no doubt. Um, it, it probably represented um, some fairly unique challenges for us over and above, obviously, the context of the market. That being, uh, we just completed a capital raise, our Series D um, equity raise. And of course, you know, as we say, there's, there's, you know, there's never a good time for a global pandemic, but clearly that couldn't have come at a worse time for us as we're out there trying to raise money. Right. Um, given you know the extent of the demand for, for uh, buying our pay later stock, both public and private, um, that uh, it ultimately ended up significantly oversubscribed, which was a great result for us. But beyond obviously the uh, raising capital, um, it certainly represented a, a, a challenge. I think the biggest uh, concern for us, certainly back in let's call it early March, when we started to, um, uh, I guess, into the early COVID. Um, phase, uh, you know, there were concerns obviously around protecting and maintaining the quality of the loan book. And unfortunately, we've been in a very good position there and very fortunate to have obviously the, the, the broader government stimulus type measures that have allowed and enabled our end consumer base to continue to meet those minimum repayments. And we've actually found that our arrears have, have stayed very stable. In fact, they've been uh, very low and continue to be very, very low in a good position which is really, really good. But we sort of shifted a little bit that focus away from growth and more about protecting and maintaining the quality of the book, but doing so in a way that obviously um, was understanding of, of individuals, individual customers' um, circumstances. And we've put in place a fairly robust uh, hardship program to help enable and support our customer base. Oh, really? So uh, if they do lose their job or whatever, you've got some provisions in place? Absolutely, and look, and that was important, of course, because clearly there's a lot of people out there that um, you know have lost their jobs or are on reduced hours, um, job keeper hours, job seeker um, uh, type conditions as well. So yeah, so we put in, like I say, we put in place a hardship program where we've allowed people in, under certain circumstances uh, to go on a bit of a repayment holiday while they get themselves um, back into a position where they can continue to meet those minimum, minimum repayments. Okay, excellent. Now. Looking at the bigger picture issues with the buy now, uh, pay later space, uh, some critics might say, oh, it's best if people just pay cash. Um, how would you respond to that and, and what's your views on the overall market? Yeah, I mean, I think the, um, what we've seen and what we have seen for some time, we're continuing to see is, is, a, is a gravitation away from 
you know, those traditional methods of payment uh, like cash and like credit cards um, and, you know, gravitation into, uh, you know, paying methods such as buy now, pay later. Um, we actually do quite a lot of communication and research with a lot of our customers and, um, and collect a lot of insights as part of this, as uh, part of that process. And, you know, the people that we survey in connection to our clients, you know, suggest that, uh, you know, over, over 50% of clients given the opportunity to, to have a buy now, pay later pro product would use it over credit cards. Um, so we're seeing a shift into uh, a, a more structured method of payment such as ours. Um, which has been really well embraced by the end consumer, but uh, it's also been used as a great opportunity for the merchants that we partner with to to sell more products, to sell better products, um, you know, to be able to meet the needs and recommend opportunities that, that that presents from the store, but also also what the requirements are to the end consumer. So I guess it's you know we're seeing a gravitation away from those other other payment methods into more structured methods such as uh, such as buy now pay later and pay right. Okay, so so you say you've you've done some research and they are gravitating from credit cards to pay right and and other you know probably others in that space. What what do you think the motivation is uh, for the consumer or what's what's driving that that shift? Do you think primarily? I think the shift has been primarily driven by um, you know people looking and seeking for a more some more clarity around how they budget. Uh, and you know, products like PayRight and other probably buy now pay later providers, you know, they provide a really good opportunity for uh, the end consumer to spread the cost of a purchase over a time, but do so in a really responsible and controlled manner. Um, chunking it down into bite size repayments uh, allows them to know exactly what they're what they're uh, needing to to, to spend. Um, and products like ours are very, very transparent. It's a start date, there's an end date, they're, they're paying it off over time. Uh, there's no interest uh, charged in it, so it represents a really affordable method of payment, uh, but it's very clear and transparent. There's no hidden hidden fees and charges that are applied. We're, we're quite open with what, uh, with what uh, all the costs are associated with the program. Like I said, there's no interest charge. So I think that's what customers are gravitating towards and seeing the value in uh, amongst the opportunity of just being able to, to, um, to, to a product in a more affordable manner. Excellent. No, that's that's very good. So they've got more control and they're less likely to get into trouble with with pay right than say a traditional credit card. Um, so you mentioned before that you try and focus or your point of difference is in the higher transaction point to say some of the others in the market. So would you like to specify both both a range? That you like to operate and also do you have a, a sweet spot like an ideal um, price point which is your target yeah look no we do we absolutely do and i think you know as I, I, I mentioned before um a lot of the other players in this space typically operate in that sort of sub one thousand dollar micro ticket type um uh space for us obviously our sweet spot if you like or, or our Point of difference is that high price point. Typically, we operate between that one thousand and up to about five thousand. So it is that high price point. I think I said our average transaction size is around uh, around two and a half thousand. And again, that lends itself to a very different merchant mix. And historically or traditionally, buy now pay later has been very uh, retail focused. Um, but again, that higher price point lends itself to a fairly diversified and a broader mix of merchants. So whilst retail is is and will always continue to be an important area for us, um, given the nature of our product and that higher price point uh, average spend, it lends itself to a different and a broader merchant mix like home improvement, uh, like photography, um, like uh, education, um, aftermarket automotive, health and beauty. Uh, and again, it's much more, it's a more considered purchase. So I'd probably say they're you know they're the key points of difference for us. We do extend credit under certain circumstances under certain circumstances right up to twenty thousand dollars. Um, but I guess the other key point of difference there is, of course, given that high price point average transaction size and, uh, and, and high, high price point extension of credit through to the end customer, it lends itself to more varied terms. And again, we know a lot of those uh, micro ticket buy now pay later providers operate under a very, let's call it a four equal installment model for, we, for us. We do provide that four equal installment model that offer quite varied terms, um, anything from six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, and again, certain, certain circumstances right up to 60 months. Does the merchant have input into that, your merchant partner, in con conjunction with the customer at the time of the purchase? Is that how that works? 
Yeah, no, look, it, it, it is absolutely. And we, we've tailored our product to be as flexible as we can to meet the requirements and demands, um, not just of the end customer, uh, customer but certainly of the, the, the merchant as well. And the way our product uh, works, um, it will always be initiated by a merchant, typically in, in dialogue and conjunction with an end customer. And of course, it will be the merchant in the first instance that will take some basic information off that customer, typically at the point of sale. Uh, and one of those key pieces of information that they'll discuss with the, the, the end customer there is what term would you like to, uh, to, to pay this down over. And what, what response, you know, we did a story in the LATS report with three bike shops who all basically gave you rave reviews. I don't know if you saw that. But, yeah. but what's, your, what's your broader response from, from the merchant partners that you have in terms of um, it helping them with their sales and so forth? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the response is, is phenomenal, um, Phil, to be honest. Like, I think we, um, we, you know, we, we, we seek to serve, obviously, the, 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 our merchants, and we, we, we feel we do that really, really well. Like I mentioned before, the, the opportunity that PayRight represents to our partners to be able to sell better products and, and to sell more efficiently and more effectively at a higher, higher margins and, you know, quite often because they can bundle more things into the sale. Um, you know, that, that's become a really valuable tool for them, uh, particularly operating it at, at the moment during you know, these challenging times, uh, more challenging times than what they would have seen. So, you know, the response that we have uh, from our merchants, and like I, said, like I said, we communicate to them quite regularly, and we've got our people, uh, all, of our, all of our merchants have a dedicated account manager. They can uh, pick the phone and, um, and, and reach out to at any given time. Um, we work very closely with them to understand their business needs and what their requirements are, knowing that every single business has, is different. You know, they're, they're, they, 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 there are different challenges that, um, that each merchant uh, is represented with um, based on where they live, what, what area, what, what, what cohort, what sector that they're in. So we try to understand that piece. And I think that's one of the things as well, that's um, that one of the positive responses that we get through from, from merchants. Um, but of course, the, the benefit of, of being able to work closely with them and understand that is something that's really important and I think quite unique to us. Yeah, I'm really getting that feel that you have a much smaller group that you have a much deeper relationship with and, and really work, work closely with, which is ideal for my sector, certainly. Um, just to, two final questions to finish up. Speaking of uh, what's close to my heart, riding bicycles and so on, I understand that you're running an interesting virtual event right now from Melbourne to Sydney in the first instance. Would you like to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, no, we are. We are, we are and, you know, we touched briefly before and obviously, you know, being uh, in Victoria anyway, you know, obviously we're in stage four lockdown and, you know, even in the other states, of course, they're under restricted uh, trading conditions. And, and obviously what, you know, one of the things that we found is that clearly it can be very challenging um, uh, mentally in, in, in many ways. And we like to encourage everybody to get out, all of our, all our team, all the employees to get out and about. And of course, we know the physical exercise uh, helps with that in many ways. Uh, so we're running a, uh, an internal, it's not a competition, but a, a, but a, a pay right challenge, let's call it, where collectively we're virtually running or riding or swimming or, or walking or dancing, I think was, what was one of the other <laughs> options there between Melbourne and Melbourne <laughs> office, our Sydney office. Yeah. Um, so basically, everybody's out there on things like Strava and and um, and recording their uh, any any kilometres that they're doing, feeding that into a progressive pool and and tallying that uh, to get us progressive distance on our way to uh, on our way to the Sydney office. And I believe as of yesterday, uh, we're now in in New South Wales. So we crossed uh -huh. the border. Um, so we're making good good time, good progress. So if we get to Sydney. Uh, in a reasonable time frame, I think from there we'll probably continue the journey up to our up to our Queensland office and beyond. So you managed to sneak past the border guards, did you? We did. We 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 got through and have a look. At it. It's a bit of fun, and I think everybody's really embraced it. Everybody's really getting into it, and yeah. again, you know, good excuse to get out there on the bike and get out there for a run and a ride and a walk and and, and uh, do a bit of exercise. No, that's a great uh, idea. And uh, final question: um, What do you think the future holds for Payright and your partners, and particularly in this current environment, who long knows how long it will go, and and also in the longer term, maybe you'd both like to make a comment on this in turn. Sure, yeah, maybe what I kick off, kick it off. Um, 
And I, for one, am uh, um, excited about uh, what the future is. We, we, we spoke before about the gravitation uh, towards payment methods such as such as this, and you know, I think we cater to a to a section of the market which is, uh, you know, perhaps not its in its infancy, but certainly um, certainly has a lot of opportunity to grow within it. Um, you know, we we are we're very excited to be part of that movement and uh, and servicing those merchants in, in that way. I think we're looking at um, a portion of the market in our space. It still really only represents about 10% of the market. Uh, so there's about 90% opportunity to, to go. Uh, and we you know, we do feel we're quite uh, well serviced in that. I should also say I'm also really enthused and, and um, excited about how businesses are pivoting over this time. Uh, we're seeing a gravitation or a change uh, in the way people are operating during this, um, you know, economic uh, period that we're in this COVID world, um, you know, people gravitating towards online um, online sales, and I should mention we, we have, we've got capability to be able to, you know, help uh, help businesses transact online with a number of plugins available. So so we're helping businesses in that way as well. Um, but but I'm very I'm really I'm I'm thrilled to see businesses changing their business model and adapting uh, to this world. I'm also equally thrilled for us to be part of that um, and look forward to, to how we can continue to support it moving forward. Excellent. And Miles? Yeah, look, I mean, it, it, just to sort of add to that, we'd certainly agree with that. And, you know, and I, we alluded to it before, but we're, we're seeing, uh, you know, an increasing societal trend, obviously, for customers that want, you know, wanting to spread the cost of living. And buy our pay later obviously enables, you know, customers and, you know, individuals to do exactly that. You know, the, the, the sector's got a long way to run. It's, uh, it, it's fairly progressed now and it's very established and, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's more than just a, 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 an understanding of the sector. There's this increasing sort of expectation. You can walk into any shop of any, of any type and make a purchase today, and then, you know, and, and pay for that purchase over time. So, yeah. uh, we think the sector's got a long way to work down. And you know, Piers sort of alluded to it before. Um, customers are migrating away from credit cards and wanting that structured uh, product that, that Buy Now Pay Later allows and enables. That's a, it's an exciting sector bit to be involved in. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Piers and Miles. And um, thank you, Phil. Look forward to meeting you out on a trail sometimes. Absolutely. No, indeed. Indeed.